Welcome, Gun Runner. Hello everybody, Kieran aka The Laird here and I'm back with a bit of a different video for you today. This isn't something I kind of often do on the channel, it's something a little bit more technical um, as well as being um, informative I hope and um, a review of sorts. So what it is I'm going to be looking at today is the Atari Max 8 megabit flash cartridge, this beauty here. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you um, how it works. Um, how to program it, a little bit about it, what you can do with it, etc. And um, first of all, I'll show you sort of what you get when you order it. So you get the flash cartridge itself, you get the programmer, which I'll show you more of in a minute, and you get a pretty standard USB cable. And the other thing you actually get is a CD with a software on. I can't seem to locate my CD. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure what I've done with it, but that you know the CD doesn't matter too much. You do get a CD with the software on it, although I'm pretty sure you can actually download the software from the website as well. And um, how this works is is to program the cartridge, you simply plug your USB cable into the side of this here. You can see that goes into your PC, um, of course and um, this just plugs onto that. So it's quite a clever system really, you can see um, the way that plugs together. And um, just like that. And then what you can do with it is, it's, um, your PC will, um, once it knows it's connected, a kind of little light comes on and you use the software on the disc, which I will show you in a minute. So these, um, cartridges um, are a variation of theme. There's, there's quite a few different ones. Um, I'll just want to cover this because some people do find it confusing. I don't know how I did when I first went to order it. Is that there are the ones that take the SD cards which go in the top um, where you can program the, the actual SD card. Um, and there is of course these ones where you're just programming the cartridge. And there is a newer one as well which is um, suitable for much larger ROMs because there are some stuff that will not work on this. For example, you can't use disk images, that's pretty understandable. And some of the really larger bank switch ROMs, which is mainly just the, the, the really late games that came like a few of the um, XE Game System releases, Mario Brothers springs to mind um, as one of them. I think Tower Top plays another, uh, Commando, stuff like that that use the larger bank switched images. They will not work with this cartridge. You need, um, I think it's called the Ultimate Cart, the other one that uses large images. But what we'll do now is I'll go, I'll, I'll take you over to the PC and um, we can have a little look um, about how this works. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the um, actual Max Flash program itself. So I've got it loaded up. And um, what you see is you've got the Max Flash Cartridge Studio. And um, obviously from here you can collect, um, connect. You can um, make a collection, a workbook as they call it, of games. So you see down here it tells me that the programmer is already connected. I've done that. And um, you've got here, initialize, it's ready to go. So the next thing I have to do is actually just literally plug in the cartridge. So I'll do that now. So there we've got the the um, the cartridge plugged in. So on the um, actual cartridge, it lights up. I'll just show you that actually. Um, so there you can see there's a LED light in there to show that it's it's ready to go. So from here we can make up a workbook. So I'll just show you how you do that first. So this is pretty easy. So you've got so you've got you've got new. You've got open if you want to load an existing workbook. So what I'll do is I'll just to to um, cut a short, and what I'm going to do is is just kind of show you that first of all. And uh, here we go. I'm just going through my folder. So I've got some here saved as MCWs. So for example, here I've got RK35, which is one that I made up. So as you can probably tell, 
It's 35 kind of arcade style games. I made this one up for an event. So you can see there, you've got the file names down it. Um, you can edit these. So you can actually see there, I could, I could change that and put Beam Rider Activision if I wanted to. Um, if I wanted to specify, for example, you know, like there's more than one version of a game or whatever. So I can change that there. So I've changed that back. So for example, there I've got Jet Set Willy 2007. Obviously, so I know that that's the homebrew version that was released and not the original one. Um, lots of bits and pieces on there. I've got homebrew stuff like X8 and that. So for example, if I wanted to change um, some of the games on here, so let's say, just take that one for a moment, I just want to take off X8. It's showing me the size and everything there when I hover over it. What I can actually do is just right click, bring up this. So it's got different things that I can do there. Clear slot. I'm not going to go too in depth into how all the options of this work. I'm just going to give you a sort of very basic overview at the beginning on how on how you can um, create your workbooks. So I'm just going to my games folder on here. I can um, look down it. So um, I'm just going to pick something out here. So let's say I want Axis Assassin, um, which is quite a nice kind of Tempest clone. So I've got different types of images there. So that's an ATR file um, and there's XEX images. So it does actually tell you if, if those images are not compatible. So for example, that one's fine. It's come up Axis Assassin version one. So I can actually remove the V1 if I wanted to. And um, it says there, you know, valid Atari EXE file. So it tells me that. Let's have a look what it does actually. I just want to show you if um, it's not a valid file, just you can see that. I'm just going to find something that um, has got something that probably isn't valid. So uh, let's try, for example, I think this one. Oh no, that one's fine. So let me try something. I'm trying to think of something that, that's going to have a disk image. Um, so. Uh, Gauntlet. That doesn't seem to mind these. <laughs> Typical when I'm trying to find something that doesn't work. Um, everything does work. Although that's not that's not to say that when you do actually um, get these on the cartridge, they do work. Sometimes it accepts the image that you're putting in, um, but doesn't like the actual. Um, image on the cartridge which you try to play so there we go that's an example there error loading for apocalypse um header error uh and that's because it's a disk image and it doesn't like disk images so it doesn't actually tell you if it's not valid but like i say um that doesn't always mean that they'll work from the cartridge because sometimes it allows the image on here it'll program onto the cartridge but then when you go to play it, it actually doesn't play or it um, crashes so there is a bit of experimental stuff going on. I mean, what I started to do is actually I started to create folders of ROMs that I knew worked with the um, the, the Max Flash cartridge. Once I discovered them, I would write them down and, um, you know, um, do it that way. Um, so I, I knew what, what worked and what didn't. So, for example, here I've got, I've got, um, see, I've got 35. It shows up to 127 slots there. The most I managed to get on a cartridge was I got 48 on one cartridge, which I thought was pretty impressive. Um, if I go new, yes, that's clear as that. I think I'll show you that here. See, I've got a couple that are big 48, fat 48 there. So, I mean, I've got some good titles on there as well, and I managed to get up to 48, as you can see. And I'll just show you how it works with um, the, the really large images, like I spoke about the... You've got um, eight meg images for homebrews, stuff like Space Harrier and, and, and GTA Blast, etc. Um, so I'll show you how it works with those because they, they're an important part of this cartridge and how it works. So, um, program. Then you've got uh, eight megabyte flash cartridge. Games and, for example... Tears Atari Blasters and 
I keep thinking of it by its old name. So Tori Bus Plus. So we, what you do here is you've got a bin or an ATR. So you see now it's come up cartridge arrays. So at the moment it's it's um, blanking the cartridge for me. So now I've got my Atari Blast image loading to the cartridge. So you can see that it's successfully loaded the Atari Blast bin file. So that's a eight meg cartridge file. So it'll take up the whole cartridge with this image. And uh, it erases the cartridge first and then it starts programming. So that can take a little bit of time. So um, what I'll do is, is um, I will just skip ahead on that. So bear with me. And there we go, 99%. And that is near enough the end of it programming. And there we go, it's 100. And then the moment it should say that it's done. And it'll stop flashing. There you go, programming cycle complete. Then you can unplug the cartridge and plug that into your Atari and it's ready to go. Okay, so we're going to take that that um, that workbook that we've got there, and we're going to program it to a cart. We see a few errors down here. I was having a few um, issues with the cart wasn't connected properly, so it wasn't programming it. So we'll try this again. Um, the magic of of video editing. So what I can do now is is actually synchronize the cartridge. So it tells me now that it's erasing the cartridge. That doesn't take too long. And you can see there now in program, in progress even, and it's programming there. And that takes that takes a little while to do. So um, what I'll do is I will leave it there and we'll skip ahead. Okay, so now you can see down here that the programming cycle is complete 100% so that means that it's done so you can now just unplug it and uh, go and plug it into your Atari and it will work and just let your games from there um, if you want to see sort of what the menu looks like um, on the Atari um, then uh, it basically looks the same as this this is the live menu preview so that's actually showing you what it would look like on your Atari screen that is customizable as well, so you can change how that, that there appears. Um, another thing I should mention as well is it's down here. You can see collection requires, so that shows you how much space um, that's taken up on the flash cartridge. So you can actually see down there, there is a little bit of space remaining, so you probably could squeeze another, another small game on there if you wanted to. So now we've looked at how the um, Atari Max cartridge works. I just want to finish off, obviously, with a, uh, a, an overview. I mean, these things are absolutely great. Um, you can also order them in um, packs. You can order, you get a discount if you order like five or something like that. And the reason I'm saying that is because what I've always wanted to do, it's one of the things that I kind of haven't got around to um, myself, but what I've always wanted to do is actually buy a load of these and catalog them. because so you could put your own labels on them quite easily. So, for example, I could have a whole cartridge full of um, Mastertronic games, a whole cartridge full of, say, arcade conversions, shoot 'em ups. So, I want I wanted to basically theme them and have a collection of them themed, which would especially be good for events. People go, oh, platform games, oh, shoot 'em ups, something like that. That'd be great rather than having to reprogram my same cartridge all the time. I mean, obviously, one of the biggest uses of these is for homebrew games because a lot of the homebrew stuff doesn't ever get released on a cartridge or on a disc or anything. It just gets released as a ROM. And uh, especially the some of the more recent um, large larger homebrews, I mean, the games I'm really talking about here is Space Harrier, which Space Harrier, there is an image just for this cartridge and it uses up the whole cartridge. So you can't get anything else on there. And it's because it's, stream, it's streaming the game actually from that cartridge. And same with the new Atari Blast, a really, really impressive shoot 'em up. Um, probably second only to um, Space Harrier in terms of, of, of how impressive it is. And again, that uses a whole cartridge 
um, to um, play the game. And uh, for those sorts of stuff like that, this is, you know, invaluable. You know, there's, there's nothing else that you can use really. So, you know, if you've got an Atari 8-bit, then this really is something you should have in your collection. There are better choices if you just don't want to buy original games and you just want to have like as large a library as possible without spending much money. You know, I'd go for one of the, the um, small um, flash devices that you can put inside your machine or um, go for the, the, the ultimate SD option so you can get as many games as you can on an on a SD cartridge. Um, but if you're like me, um, you like to collect the original games, I've got a pretty big collection of cartridges myself. Um, and you just want to play stuff at homebrew and demos and um, some of the stuff that was never released, then these things are absolutely perfect and I cannot recommend them enough. So I hope you enjoyed um, my look at the Atari Max 8 megabyte flash cartridge. Um, please give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you all again for another video soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.